Smith, you ready to go ashore now? Would it make any difference if I wasn't? Not much. Okay, so why ask me? I've been ready to get off this rust bucket since we left New York. Hey, Joe! Hey, Joe! Huh? Ah. Look! <laughs> so you're the one who got it, eh? Nice going, kid. Here. Hey, this is for being smarter than the others. Got you. That little squirt's gonna do all right. Hey, Joe. What? Cigarette. Grazie, signor. Well, where are we going, sailor boy? You gotta go through customs. Here's two copies of this man's papers. Keep one and sign the other one for me to take back, okay? You are Vittorio Marios Paraducci? The name is Smith, Vic Smith. It is written here, Vittorio Marios Paraducci. I don't care what it says there. The old man was Paraducci. He's been dead ten years. If your father's name was Paraducci, you was Paraducci. Look, Donati, they always change their names. We both know who he is and what he is. So sign my copy and let me get out of here. We've got to unload that flower. I bet it. Echo. Thanks, Drago. So long, sailor boy. Now, Senor Spaladucci, when did you first go to the United States? I don't remember exactly. It was 1923 or 24. You say your father is dead. Your mother, is she alive? She died when I was a kid. Here in Italy? Of course, here in Italy. Did you have any other family in America? Yeah, I had a brother two years older than me, Luigi. He's dead, too. How? When? He was killed in a, an accident, Valentine's Day in Chicago. I forget the year. Have you any family here in Italy? How do I know? When we left home, my old man had a brother, Armando. Maybe he's dead now, too. I don't know. What was your occupation in America? Bookmaking, slot machines, the numbers. So, and how much money are you bringing to this country? That's my private business. Yes and no. I only want to know the amount. So are a lot of people. Well? Say, around a thousand dollars. I don't need any handout if that's what's bothering you. Here, sign your name here. Your full name, Vittorio Mario Spaladucci. If I can spell it. The Carabinieri will see you outside. The who? The Carabinieri. The police. Okay. 
You're Victor Smith? That's right. I'm Wicker from the American Embassy in Rome. Oh, well, what do you want? I'm an Italian citizen now, remember? Oh, don't worry. We're happy to get rid of you. This is Signor Bucelli of the Italian Ministry of the Interior. Look, I just got off the boat. If you're trying to frame me for something, why don't you wait at least a couple of days? It'll look better. No one is trying to frame you, Signor Smith. However, since you come to us as a deported citizen, mm, there are certain conditions to your freedom of movement in this country. Like what? Our records show that you were born in Marbella. By Italian law, you are now required to return there and spend the next 30 days. After that, you may be free to... 30 days in that dump? Don't be funny. I got plans of my own. <laughs> no doubt, but they will have to wait. Now, look, I go where I like, when I like. I served my time. I got no probation hanging over me here. No, but if you're smart, you'll do exactly as Signor Bercelli says. He's handled bigger shots than you who've been deported from the state. You know who they are. The next train for Siena leaves at noon in two hours. You will change there for Marbella. I advise you to take that train, Signor Smith. Ah, I shall have trouble with that one. Big trouble. What makes you think so? I have the nose for such things, Signore. It never fails. You shall see. Grazie, 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 Signore. Oh, excuse me. I thought you were getting out. Could be. Oh, wait a second. Get in. I'll take you wherever you're going. Well, if you don't mind. Not a bit. What's your name? Gina. Gina. I'm Vic. Where do you live, Gina? I wasn't going there. Why don't we? Go ahead, tell them where we want to go. Autista, via Sarabita 26. Si, sí, signorina. You're welcome to me. What are you doing here? You got the nerve to ask me that? That's rich, Vic. That's very funny. I waited five years for you to get out of Sing Sing. All the time figuring you were my pal, same as before. So what happened? You finish your stretch and two days later you skip the country. I didn't skip it. I was bounced out, deported. Yeah, I know all about that. But you didn't even try to see me before you left. I couldn't have seen you even if I wanted to. So you admit it. You didn't want to. That's right. I had a lot of time to think about us, Bernie. Sure, you planned the job, but who pulled it? Who took all the chances? And who got caught, you or me? That was your tough luck. But you got the hundred grand. The police never did find that money. And half of it is mine. Uh, not anymore, Bernie. Now, I took the rap for both of us. I could have made a deal with the DA any time just by naming you. But I didn't spill. I sweated it out for five long years. And you paid me for that with your half. Now, we're all even, Bernie. We're washed up. You just took a big trip over here for nothing. Did I? You ought to know me better than that, Vic. Come on, let's have it. 
Don't you think I was dumb enough to try to bring it with me? I don't think you were dumb enough to leave it behind. Not you, not a hundred grand. Okay, why don't you search me? Go through my bag, see for yourself. Take off your coat. Get his bags. It's not you either. A grand. One grand. Where's the rest of it? Right where I left it five years ago, in New York. Who's keeping it for you? You guess. No, Vic. You're gonna tell me. I'll get it out of you if I have to kill you. I'm glad you brought this up, Bernie. Now it's settled once and for all. Put my things in those two bags. Fold them nice and neat like they were. Don't try to follow me, Bernie. Don't ever try to see me again. If you're smart, you'll hop the first plane to New York and stay there. You're lucky I'm giving you that much break. Too bad, Gina. You and I could have had a lot of fun. Avete visto un americano? Eccolo qui. Vittorio. Vittorio. Son of my brother. Blood of my blood. Oh, you look wonderful. You're my Uncle Armando. Uncle Armando. What an honor. My nephew from America has come to visit with us. Teresa, this is our nephew from America. As if I wouldn't have known. And this is my wife's niece, Serafina. Ciao, Vittorio. Oh, Vittorio, I knew you at once. The image of your father. So handsome, so big. That's so... enough for Vittorio. Let's go home. Of course, of course. He's tired, he's hungry. Well, we will eat. Come on, I have an automobile. Maybe I better go to a hotel. Huh? Hotel? My nephew, son of my brother Umberto, comes from America to visit his poor uncle, who's only a baker of a bread, and he suggests to go to a hotel. We have already prepared for your arrival, Vittorio. Our house is not large, but you are welcome. It gives Armando great pleasure. You ride up in front of me so we can talk. Serafina, go and buy a bottle of Australia and walk home. We got, we got no room in the car. Thank you. Ah, it was so great a surprise. Not two months ago, I was saying to Teresa, how strange, we got no news from the son of my brother Umberto. Then, like a miracle, from Naples comes a telegram this afternoon saying that you will arrive on the afternoon train. I was so excited, I almost burned the bread in the oven. You did burn it. 
Here, let me do that. Vittorio, you and me, we are the only Sparaducci's left in the world. All the others, Umberto, Lorenzo, Maria, Tommaso, Ambrosino, Luigi, all gone, but you and me. It's a great shame for our family. Are you married, Vittorio? No. Ah, we got a beautiful girl here in Marbella. Magnificent. Who, for instance? I was thinking of the nieces of your sister, my dear. Hey, here, let me try. See, Teresa? He is strong, like Colossus Sparducci. Many times during the war. When the American soldiers were here, I have dreamed that you would come to visit us. I was busy during the war with the government. Of course, of course. We should have known immediately that our Vittorio was with the government. How else would we receive such a telegram if my nephew were not with the government? Do you think the American embassy personally would send such a telegram? What is this telegram you're talking about? Let me see it. Oh, it's a fine telegram. It says, uh, the nephew, Vittorio Baraducci, reaches Marbella on 5 p.m. train. Denman Wickruff, United States Embassy. Take him up to his room, Armando. I have to cook supper for your friends. Yes, my dear. All my friends have been asking to meet you. Father Gennaro, Aldo Brescia, Ernesto Pampiglione, the editor of our newspaper, and Beniamino Bardi. So I invite them all to come to dinner. And to Vittorio, this is your house. Per Bacco, the man is the image of his father. I too was a good friend of your father. He was a fine man. You must have heard him speak of Beniamino Bardi. Oh, sure, sure, many times. And I remember you were the little boy when you came to my church. Also your brother Luigi. He had a wonderful voice. Yeah, but he sang once too often. Well, how about some more wine, Armando? Oh, forgive me, Vittorio. Tonight, I'm too happy to think. <laughs> Teresa, we will open our best wine, the Montepulciano, uh, in honor of my nephew, who works with the United States government. And uh, what is your mission to Italy, Signor Smith? I would like to know for my paper, the Corriere di Marbella. Well, uh, what I'm doing here is, is sort of confidential. Of course. A man cannot speak of the private affairs of his government with everybody who asks. <laughs> naturally, naturally, I, I didn't realize. Whatever your mission may be, Vittorio, the biggest problem in Italy is food. Food! And those black market rascals like Guido Caruso, who bleed the people, selling them far at four times the regular price. You mean some guy here in Marbella? Yes, Vittorio, he runs a cafe, Cafe Firenze. But his real money is made through the back door. Everyone knows it, even the police. But they do nothing, nothing. No decent person will even speak to Guido Caruso. You have gangsters like that in America, too? Uh, yeah, yeah. But your police, they know what to do with such bad ones, eh? So they tell me. Cannelloni, I haven't tasted this stuff since I was a kid. Good. Ah, oh, did I tell you? <laughs> Once an Italian, always an Italian. Uh, <laughs> and maybe he doesn't want to go back to America. <laughs> maybe he wants to stay here for good. Ah, okay. uh, Vittorio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Buongiorno, Vittoria. Good morning. What a beautiful spring day. But you should have seen the sunrise. Sunrise? You get up for that? Me? I have begun to work two hours before dawn every day for 35 years. That's a heck of a job. Oh, you're joking, Vittorio. I have the best job in all of Marbella. Every day I see the sunrise. Then I bake the bread for the people. What more can an ugly man like myself want out of life? I could name a couple of things. What's this? Pane Bianco. Not for a long time I've baked a pure white bread. It's not permitted. <laughs> but for my American nephew, I defy the law. Have you seen the view from the room? No, not yet. Come on, look. It is magnificent. Huh? Do you remember Marbella like this in your childhood? Not much. Just my father's old house, the railroad station, and the... Now, truthfully, is there in America anything more beautiful than that? Who is she? Who's who? Down there, the woman by the car. Oh, that is Contessa di Lorenzi. A wonderful lady. A great lady. Ah, but so young and so beautiful to have such a tragedy. What do you mean? Her husband, the Count, was killed in a war five years ago. And she's still very sad. We do our best to console her, but... Is that where she lives? Quite a joy. She must have a lot of money. Yes, so they say. But she has given most of it away to the poor. Without that charity, many people in Marbella would have starved long ago. Well, I must go back to the shop. When you dress, come down. Everybody in town wants to meet you. Screwdriver. All right, try it now. There we are. That's all it needed, just a carburetor adjustment. Sounds a little better now, doesn't it? Beautiful, beautiful, like Puccini. Why, the motor hasn't run like that for months. You're very kind to help us, Senor Smith. That's okay, glad I could. Where did you learn so much about cars, Vittorio? In New York? I worked in a garage once up the road. Did you hear that, Pietro? In America, a poor boy who works hard can become a rich man. Armando, will you and your nephew please come and have coffee with me? Grazie, Contessa. But I gotta go back to my bread. But you, Vittorio, you should go. It's the most beautiful villa in Marbella. I'd like to, but weren't you just leaving? Oh, it doesn't matter now. It would be too late anyway. Romano, porta il caffè là. Teresa? Si? Vittorio has made the Contessa's car sound like a new. He's very clever, isn't he? Si. Very clever. I asked Father Gennaro only this morning if he would bring you to see me, Signor Smith. Me? I didn't figure you knew anything about me. Good heavens, I know all about you. Like what? Oh, I've heard bits of gossip from practically everyone in the neighborhood. You're not really the President of the United States, but almost. Seriously, there are two things I know about you. They both make me happy. Now I'm curious. Well, your visit here has given Armando the thrill of his life. And to me, that is a wonderful thing. Yeah, he's a nice guy. And the second is that you are an American. What's so unusual about that? There are no others in Marbella except you. And the people here are so grateful for all the food and other help which has come to us from America that... Well, you will give them a symbol to thank in person. So now I'm Mr. America. That's very funny. You're very modest, Senor Smith. But I like that, too. Ah, café. Sit down, please. Grazie. I've also heard some interesting things about you. Oh? Yeah, they tell me if it wasn't for you, this town would have gone awful hungry the past few years. I do what little I can, and we have personal friends in America who send more. But there is never enough. You mean your friends in the States buy food with their own money and send it over here to give away? Yes. And I hope that perhaps you will help us, Senor Smith. Either here or when you get back to America. You won't be going back soon. No. Oh, I'll be around a while. Well, then we shall be friends. Why not? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> Sit 
took you up too soon, huh? <laughs> no, no. It only sounded so American. I had almost forgotten. You've almost forgotten how to laugh, too, haven't you? Yes, I suppose I have. Well, will you have dinner with me somewhere? No, I, I don't know. You see, I never go out at night. Maybe it's time you did. No, not yet. Perhaps you will have dinner with me. Sure. Well, what's the difference? Signora? Got any American whiskey? Perhaps. If you want to pay the price. How much? Fifteen hundred lira. Two bucks for a shot of whiskey? Oh, this is a great country. Okay, bring it out. Good afternoon, signore. The whiskey's not good. I told the waiter to bring you our best grappa. My own bottle. Thanks. My name is Guido Caruso. This is my place. Oh, yeah. You've heard of me, hmm? One or two little things. So, you are the great Victoria Smith from America. This town's got a swell grapevine. I have heard of you, too. One or two little things. How much you pay for the shoes? Twenty dollars, why? I give you thirty dollars for them right now, the way they are. They wouldn't fit you. They don't have to. I know where to sell them for forty dollars. I guess they didn't lie much about you at that. Oh, sure they lie. The same rich, the millionaires. There is no way to make big money today. What Italy needs is the kind of things you have in America. A few good, solid rackets. What were these one or two little things you heard about me? In my work, everyone knows the business of everyone else, Senor Smith. So I hear of you. I know you were once what you call a big shot in America. But I also know this is no business of mine. Who else in town knows that? Nobody but me. Now tell me about your business. I buy a little, sell a little. You got your own organization? Oh, a few boys who work for me, nothing much. Just a few boys. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? I bet you do all right. I know you've made a big success in America. If you should ever wish to discuss any kind of proposition... What do you mean, proposition? I didn't come here to talk business. Oh, of course, of course, but... But still, it could be a lucky thing for both of us. Anyway, welcome home to Marbella. This is a long table. Yes. It has been in my husband's family for hundreds of years. Did he sit here? Yes. Always? Every night? Yes. Senor Smith, do all of you Americans treat women so, uh, so directly? I wouldn't know. Maybe. But why? Have you so little time to spare? I've had a lot of time recently. I don't understand. Oh, skip it. Oh, it's just that I've never seen anyone quite as beautiful as you are. Thank you. Should we have our coffee on the terrace? Certainly, Contessa. Look, I, uh, I can't keep calling you Contessa. What do your friends call you? Christina. Christina. 
Yeah, I like that a lot better. It makes you almost human. That was not very kind. I'm not trying to be kind. I'm only telling you the truth. You're all locked up inside, Christine. Five years is a long time. But a widow, especially a young one, she doesn't stop being a woman, does she? Does she? Senor Woodcroft, I did not expect you so early. Would you join me? A glass of wine, perhaps? Oh, thank you. Well, what have you heard from our common friend? Smith? Yes. He's done more than just keep himself out of trouble for the last three weeks. He's been an absolute model of good behavior. <laughs> it's only a bluff, Signore. Uh, smoke screen. I told you the first time I saw this Smith Paraducci, he was a bad one. What are you getting at, Pacelli? Here it is in black and white. Vittorio Smith. Vittorio Smith. In every issue. I have the sight sense in my nose. And it tells me that I will still arrest him. For what? Ah, look at this. Pictures. From the Corriere de Marbella of May 10th. Hmm. Vittorio Smith, well-known American, assists the Contessa de Lorenzi in the distribution of food parcels. What does your nose think about that? Ah, uh, there, it begins to twitch. Oh, not a chance. Not with the Contessa de Lorenzi. I know all about her. Go on, read the rest. All right. Here it lists the contributors to the fund for the relief of the unemployed farm workers. Vittorio Smith, 60,000 lira. Oh, a mere hundred dollars. Would it satisfy you if they canonized him in St. Peter's? It would not. What is happening is the most simple thing, signore. He's showing off, and for a purpose. You will see. Oh, lay off, Pacelli. The guy's just trying to straighten himself out. What else can you make of it? I'm always thinking of the hundred thousand dollars he left in America. And so is Victorio Smith. That would be very useful to him now, don't you think so, signore? I guess so, sure, but what's that got to do with this? I do not know the answer yet. But my nose keeps asking me about Victoria Smith and his contest, sir. Morning, Signor Papaglioni. Morning, Signor Smith. Well, say, uh, what's the news today? That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Perhaps you have something. No, nothing to write about me. Bye. Morning, Vittorio. Hello, Christina. Need another good handyman today? Oh, no, thank you. We can't afford it. The last time you gave twice too much to everyone. Did they complain? No, but the ones who learned about it later came back and almost started a riot. You can help us make up some of the boxes, if you will. Sure, anything. Well, go on. Hey, bambini! Chocolate! <laughs> Vittorio, what are you doing? Who oh, mean nothing? I'm just helping out. By making children fight that way? You should be ashamed of yourself. Ah, they're not fighting. Kids like to scramble for stuff. Here, I'll show you. Stop it. I forbid it. Okay, so they were fighting. Maybe it's time they learned to. How do you think anybody gets anything except by fighting for it? That might be your philosophy, but it is not mine. Sure, I'm a roughneck. I had to fight for what I got. All you had to do is marry it. Wait a minute. 
I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Please, please don't. I could cut my tongue out. It's all right. You didn't know. It's what they all do. Throw them a bone and watch the scramble. I, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't even think of it that I way. I know. And I should not have struck you. No. Why not? Because I don't want it this way. You mean you don't want me? Is that it, Christina? I don't know, Vittorio. I don't know. I... It has been noted everywhere, when with great pleasure I may add, that you are interested in him. I've noted it myself. I'm becoming fond of him, Father. And do you feel it is not yet time? I feel it may never be time. Not for Vittorio and me. Oh. And yet, Father, I grow fonder of him each day. There is a difference in your stations, of course. A vast difference. Vittorio is not a cultured man. No. But I feel he has character which is even more rare today. He is a curious man, Father. There is something hidden deep inside him. A bitterness, a, a secret. It does not let him be what he would like to be. I'm not in love with him. I constantly fear that I might be someday. Or perhaps I'm only longing to release him from whatever it is that tortures him. But that is the essence of love, my child. In some ways, he was very much like you. Me and the Count de Lorenzo? It doesn't make sense. My old man used to clean his father's stables. Oh, you never told me that. You never said very much at all about yourself. Only that you were an orphan in New York and quite poor. I've had to imagine all the rest. What was your guess? Well, you're obviously a self-made man. You mean the way I talk? Sure, I didn't have much education. What difference does that make? I didn't mean that. You mustn't be ashamed of it, Vittorio. You should be proud of your success. It's not how you begin that counts, it's how you end up. No wonder the people of Marbella love you. You know what hunger means and hopelessness and all the things they're going through now. They can look at you and find hope for themselves. <laughs> I made that mark about, hey, 25 years ago. But I cannot imagine you that high. <laughs> <laughs> you 
The Essie. It was a Sunday afternoon when my old man had taken us on a picnic. My mother, me, my brother Luigi. <laughs> Luigi had on a brand new suit and he fell in a mud puddle. Oh, <laughs> you should have heard the screams. Ah, it's funny how all those things come back to you. You know, you've changed since I've known you. Who, me? Yes. I don't know what it is, but, but you've softened somehow. Ah, don't be foolish, Christina. Fought all your life the way I have. Learned what I've learned. You never get soft, you never change. Anyway, that's all ancient history. Look, you, you remember I said I wanted to talk to you about something? Yes, Vittorio. Well, if, if I was to give you a kind of present, would you take it? What kind of a present? Food. For the people of the town, a whole lot of food. But why? Well, I, I've done pretty well. I can afford it easy. You, you wouldn't have to worry about a thing. Just tell me who to contact in New York. I've got a friend there. He'll have the stuff on the way in a week. How, how about it? It's a lovely present. Thank you. Yes, Victoria. I have changed too. What kind of fish is that? Doesn't even smell fresh to me. <laughs> Figured this would be a good place for us to meet. We could do some shopping while you were waiting. I had to. I can't go back to my wife without some excuse. But why Siena? Why couldn't we talk in Marbelle? Because I want you to send a cablegram for me. Remember that deal we talked about? Yes, yes. I got it worked out. That is good, Vittorio. Wonderful. Just so we all know how to plan. How much? A hundred thousand dollars. That is sixty, seventy million lira. Oh, it's too much for me. I never handled so much. 70 million lira. You wanted a deal, didn't you? Well, you got one. Oh, please, Vittorio, I'm too small. I... Well, who is big enough to handle this? You know somebody? Perhaps. Yes, there is one man, Signor Scamandi, in Florence. All right, go talk to him. See what he says and how much he wants. Don't give him my name. I'll have to. Look, Vittorio, why don't you come with me? Me go to Florence? You crazy? I'm on probation. I'm not even supposed to leave my villa. This is a message I want you to send to New York. It won't make sense to you because it's in code that I worked out with a friend. You'll know what it means. Hello, Gina. Where's your boyfriend? I don't know. Walk here. And I don't want to see any more of you, either. Why not? We never had any trouble, you and me. Go away. Tell me, what are you doing here so far from Naples? Business? I live here. That's another reason. I don't want to be seen with you. We don't have to be seen. Where are you staying? With my mother. Oh, I'd like to meet her. I get along fine with mothers. If you don't stop bothering me, I'll call the Carabinieri. You didn't call them the last time we met. Quant'è? Mille lire. Mille lire? Ma come? Se costa 500 nel negozio. Lo provi, vedrà com'è bello. Assolutamente, glielo Me lo dia per 700. E senta purissima. 750. 900. Ma roba da pazzi, se non è neanche 100 lire. Non si può. No. E beh, pazienza. Se lo tengo. No. Ma no, se lo tengo. Bravo, lo prenda. Due. Grazie. Let's make up, huh? 
Looks beautiful on you, Gina. Come on, let's go see your mother. I've got one for her, too. to you again. You're good. <laughs> that was a nice picture of you in the papers, Vic. Moving in high society now, eh? Contessa, no less. <laughs> you must have forgot what I told you in Naples. No. I've got a wonderful memory. <laughs> That's why I'm here. You also got a sweet wait. I've waited five years. I can wait a little longer, but not too long, Vic. We're both getting kind of short on dough. You, maybe. Not me. Now, I'm living with an uncle. No rent, no overhead. <laughs> you got anything else to say? Yeah. You figure out a way yet to get the money over here? Can't be done. No, I've given it up. They're watching me all the time. Who else beside me? Italian police, American embassy. I can't make a move. But you will make one, won't you, Vic? Sure. You've got to. Sooner or later. So I'll just hang around. Sure. Next time we meet, Gina, maybe I'll tell you where to go, huh? Oh, I could fool you a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> Arrivederci, Vittorio. Was there anybody with him when you picked him up? Yes, a funny little man. I never saw him before. Why? Try to find him. See what he does and where he goes. Mm, that should be easy. Tell the cousin Josephine, hello, stop. Uh, weather here is very beautiful, stop. Take my blue coat to Charlie for white buttons, stop. Much love, Guido Garuso, Marbella. Why you say uh, weather is beautiful? Last week it rained five days, all day, all night. Who is paying for this message? You or me? Me. I like the weather. You can save for some money, senor. Why say much love? This goes to a man, you know? Maybe you want to write this. Maybe you know this man better than I do. Send a message. Mr. John R. Walsh, 487 E, 137th Street in New York. But you forgot the name of the street. The name? Do you think New York is the size of Siena? They used to uphold the names, so they have numbers. Suppose a man gets lost and he cannot count. What does he do? Questions, questions. Do you wish to drive me insane? Tell me what it costs and send it. How much? Five, seven, 
5,895 liter. How much? 5,895 liter. But if you take off the buttons for the coat and the much from the lava, then... No, no, no. Like it is. Send it. Here's the money. What did you tell him, my uncle and his wife? Tell him? Me? Nothing. Nothing at all. I merely inquired for you. <laughs> Your uncle was flattered. He thought I came on some big government business. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, I simply follow my nose. You look very well, Signor Smith. Italy agrees with you. I asked you, Pacelli. What do you want? But I wonder, do you agree with Italy? Oh, look, it's tough enough sitting out 30 days in this dump without you popping up. You got nothing to hang on me, not a thing. No. No, not yet. That's why I came here. <laughs> you see, in America, the police wait until a crime is committed, and then they try to find out who did it. But, but I work a little differently, Senor Smith. I find a crime before it's committed and try to stop it. Aren't you this smart one? What cute little frame-up are you working on me? <laughs> I have framed nothing. I have only been studying the picture. Well, come on, what does it add up to in that famous beak of yours? It adds up to $100,000. I don't get it. No, but you would like to. Crazy. I never even saw a hundred grand in my life. Yes, Senor Smith. Five years ago. But no one else has seen it since then. Now, it cannot be sent to you through the mail because, as you know by now, all your mail is opened first by us. Also, no one can bring it to you because we and the American police are watching the one man in New York you could trust. So, so uh, I put myself in your shoes, Senor Smith. I hear and I read what you do here in Marbella until suddenly I see your plan. The one way, the only way you can possibly get that money into Italy. It's so simple, but so clever that I am filled with admiration. But, uh, I thought I should tell you that I know. You finished with that pipe dream? Okay, now get this straight, Puccelli. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't plan a thing. 
Blast. If I did pull a caper here, it wouldn't be the kind of cheap Ginzo flatfoot like you could pin on me. Now, keep out of my way. Clear out. Or I will give you something to put in that nose. One day they made a saint out of you in this town. Saint Vittorio Smith of New York. It surprised a lot of people there. Isn't it a wonderful feeling to do a good thing and see the pleasure it gives others? I'm going to tell everyone where the money came from that bought this food. No, don't do that, Christina. You promised me. I got all the thanks I want from you. But I don't want to take credit for your generosity. But that's the way I want it. I, I don't like people who make a big show of their money. It's not polite. Polite? I love every crazy thing you say. wonderful treasure, Vittorio. Everything we have needed for years. Excuse me. Look, flour, sugar, everything in bulk to the left. Even the drivers of the trucks are excited by it. We must invite them all to the party tonight. Sure, we'll invite everybody. Driver. Driver. To me. Uh, are you sure everything is here? There was nothing lost? Everything is here. I came off the ship. Mm. And there were no accidents on the way? No one stopped you? No, senor. That's it. Uh, I am a stranger here, Signora. I'd like to know how, I mean, uh, where did all this food come from? America. 
As a gift? Yes. Who paid for it? Friends of our society in New York. Will you excuse me, sir? Thank you very much. Dario, will you help me? Si, Contessa. Oh. <clears throat> I'm confused, Signor Smith. I'm not often confused. So, we all make mistakes. True, possibly. But I'm disappointed with my nose. This would be its first mistake in 25 years. Maybe it's tired. Why don't you give it a vacation? Think about going, Vittorio. Tonight we are all too happy for that. We are all so happy. Why does no one dance? Yes? Why? I will dance. Will you give me the honor, Contessa? No, Armando, you are drunk. You have not danced for 20 years. Tonight I will make up for it. Come on, Armando, we'll start them off. Bravo, bravo, Armando. Oh, oh, oh. gift in all the history of Marbella, in all the history of Tuscany, to the Contessa di Lorenzo. Victoria, I've got to tell them now. No, no, please. Please. Wait. to tell anyone this, but I cannot keep it from you any longer. This all comes to you from America, it is true, but it comes to you especially from one American. It is his gift to you and to the town where he was born and that he loves. Vittorio Smith. shy and modest man, and he's greatly embarrassed by this, so do not follow him, but thank him with your hearts, as I do. <laughs> Get 
grazie. Uh, signor Caruso, signor Smith è downstairs in the cafe. He wants to talk to you. Um, tell him to wait. Okay. No, no, I'll come down. Va bene. We don't. Guido, where are you? Oh, oh, Signor Vittorio, I've been so busy tonight. So much to do that I forgot to eat. The men we hired in Florence, the drivers for the trucks, they came an hour ago and they are waiting in the street behind the cafe. But they are demanding more money. They say the risks are too great. <laughs> and what can I do? I say, okay, okay, anything. Oh, my, my feet hurt. My head is buzzing like a thousand bees with everything you told me to do. Oh, forget the whole thing, Guido. The deal's off. <laughs> <laughs> you are joking. <laughs> We're not going to touch that food. It stays right where it is. The police? No. No, oh, the Contessa. In the square just a few minutes ago, she told the whole crowd I gave her the money that bought all that stuff. Uccelli was there. He heard her say it. He's been watching every move I make. If we strip that warehouse tonight, he'll know I rigged the whole thing. But, but you won't even be there. We'll do it with the other drivers. Like we said, you'll be at home, in bed. Buccelli won't know anything about it until tomorrow. And by then, the food will be gone where nobody can find it. No, no. Buccelli would track it right back to me. And maybe you'd talk. How do I know? The chance is too big. But you can't do this, Signor Vittorio. I've paid out. So have I, Guido. I paid for that hundred grand once with five years of my life. I'm not going to pay for it again in some stinking Italian jail. Now, do what I tell you. Go on outside and call off those men we hired for the night. Send them away. How can I send them away? Who is going to pay that for coming here? Did a tough Tell them I'll pay whatever it's cost up till now. I'll call you from Rome and send you the money. So you're an out on me, eh? Who talked me into this? You. Who planned the whole job? You! And now you leave me to be beaten up, even killed! Oh, stop screaming. Nobody's gonna do anything to you. They'll be sore because they missed out on a fat deal, sure. And your pal in Florence who is gonna sell the stuff for you, he'll have a beef, too. So what? So put the blame on me. Tell him anything you want. But this is my business, and I say it's no deal. Make that good and clear. brought back my dress. Guido, where is it? Haven't they pressed it yet? Are you drunk? I said, where is my dress? Imbecile. with me for telling them it was you who gave them the food? I was then, yes, but... I don't understand, Vittorio. There was no real harm in it, and I just felt that they should know the truth. Yeah. Maybe you should know it, too. What do you mean? I've lied to you about myself, everything, from the beginning. I'm not even an American. I was deported. I had a criminal record. Five years in a New York penitentiary. A grand theft. Another man and I stole $100,000. And that was the money I gave you. It wasn't a gift. I never meant it to be. I just couldn't get it into Italy any other way. So I used you. Tonight, I was going to take that food from the warehouse, all of it, and sell it through the black market. And that was why I asked you not to tell anyone it was my money that paid for it. Well, now they know. So do the police, and so do you. And you were never in love with me? At all? No. Not at first, no. 
Only when it was too late to stop what I'd begun, then, then I knew I loved you. If I had not told him tonight, would you still have left Marbella? No. That was my plan at the start, but then I knew I wanted the money only because I wanted you. It was all I had, all I could offer you. Why? Had you so little faith in yourself or in me? I always figured a man paid his own way. That money was still mine, Christina. You forget that. All right, the way I went about it was wrong, but if it could have brought us together, who would have been hurt? And you would never have told me? Never. I cannot understand such reasoning as yours, Vittorio. What kind of love can there be between any man and a woman if it's based upon deception? I don't know, but I would have taken a chance. Anyway, it didn't happen. Maybe it's best that it didn't. You'd have found out someday. I'm sorry, Christine. At least your food will be safe now. I can promise you that much. Stay here. If the police come, you blow the horn. more stuff in here than we have trucks for. So what do we take, Signor Caruso? And what do we leave? I don't know yet. I don't want to leave nothing. Let's see what's up there. supplies worth more than the food ten times more yes but these toys who needs toys what has italy got more than anything else <laughs> bambini che stupido for this we get a fortune <laughs> come on we have got work to do Tell my friend to come in. I thought you might try this, Guido. Did 
deal was just too big for you to pass up, wasn't it? Come on down here. Come on. Now walk over to your men and tell them exactly what I told you to tell them, that the deal is off, to get out of here. Go on, move. Cross Guida. What a beautiful setup. One hundred G's worth of food. I would have never thought of it. Would have never known. Okay, Vic. I gave you every chance. Alarme! La policia! Lasciamo passare, scemo! Come back here! Come back! Dal mio, andiamo via!
qua sotto, eccolo! Attenzione, leggermente. Piano, eh, mi raccomando. Mio Dio, speriamo che sia vivo. But I... I don't understand the signor. You must be mistaken. My nephew is an important man in America. He even works with the government. I'm very sorry to tell you all this, Signor Sparaducci. But what has he done? Enough for them to deport him from America. As a criminal. Well, come on. But you, Vittorio, you have nothing to say to me. It is true what he says. Yeah, it's true. Now on, let's get going. Oh, wait. Whatever you were in America, whatever you are now, you are my blood. It's here, inside me. I cannot deny it. If you need any help, any money, anything. Who else knows about me? I have told nobody. They only know about Caruso and the others. Why are you taking me to Rome? You have killed a man. That was self-defense. You saw it. He shot at you, too. Yes. But there are many things you must explain. If you can. Wait here. I'll talk to them. What is the matter? What do you want? You want to see the Americano. What do you want to see him for? You want to thank him. Ask him to come out on the balcony. Sì, sì, subito, viene subito, subito. They want to see you, Vittorio. They want to thank you. Thank? Well, that's a laugh. Let's go out the back way. Wait! If you have any feelings at all, any feelings for your family, you have to go out and talk to the crowd. What'll I say to him? Say anything. It doesn't make any difference. Just show yourself. done anything for you to thank me for. Any one of you would have done the same thing if, if somebody tried to take what was yours. I'm glad that you have this food. There were many other things I might have bought, but they wouldn't have meant as much. Yesterday they might have meant more, but, but not now. Not now. Well, that, that's all I wish to say. some grapes, Vittorio. It's a long way to Rome. I wonder where's my wife. She says she would bring some food. Scusa, mi torno subito. He's a good man. You have a good family. I wish I could believe your word as much as his. It's up to you. I told you everything about last night. Yes. But still, I ask myself why you did not go through with it. Did you change your mind or 
Were you forced to change it? What difference does that make now? None, whatever. <laughs> I just had a very funny idea. You know, nobody got rich from all this but the poor. And now, my problem is to make that clear to the police in Rome. Pietro, put them on the train. I will call you tonight from Rome and tell you when to bring the car. See, Contessa. Well, we can't stand here forever. The train will leave without us. Oh, wait. Don't get mixed up in this, Christina. Stay out of it. How can I, Vittorio? I'm in love with you. Wonderful news. Prego, signor. Naso. Naso. 